Hi, I'm Thorsten from TI Systems and in today's video I want to give you a quick overview over some of the changes we are introducing in Photomate R3. So if you are switching from Photomate R2 in this video you will learn how the new version will work, what has changed it, what is new and yeah, some key differences. So let's get started. So first let's talk about the gallery and the file browsing and navigation and so on. So what I have here is a big folder with about 400 raw files and I'm currently watching this folder in Photomate R3 and may you notice that some images have some kind of stacking icon here at, at the corner. And this icon means that this is a raw file where also a JPEG with the same name exists. So Photomate will normally now recognize this as one image and will always edit a raw file of course. But if you're going for instance to delete these files, Photomate will give you an information that uh, you're going to delete actually two files here. So be careful if this on and uh, of course if you don't want this, you can disable it in the settings but uh, normally it should give you a better overview over the uh, over your images here. So next let's talk about image organization and filtering. So for this I want to switch to Photomate R2 first and show you how it was before. So yeah I have the same folder in Photomate R2 and here you can also see uh, that some here are JPEGs and RAW and it doesn't group them as well. Uh, you can may also see that the thumbnails are a little bit more cluttered than in R3 because R3 are showing them a little bit different. So the filtering by default in Photomat R2 was uh, we had a filter bar here at top. So for instance I could go to settings and now I could say I want to turn the filtering on and now I could say a file type, I could enter it, I could enter or choose a rating, I could also show greater rated images and so on, which obviously works. So for instance now I'm turning the filtering on and I actually set the rating to 5 stars and now it's just showing 5 star images, which is working. Um, now let's go move over to Photomat R3 uh, and do the same thing. So Photomat R3 now has a button here which is called filter and if I tap it it may take quite a while but normally it's going pretty quickly depending on how much files you have and now you have a filter bar at the top and this filter bar is actually pretty useful because now obviously you can also choose let's say the type but you don't have to enter it because uh, R3 will automatically detect which kind of files are in your folder here and for instance I can say I just want to see the CR2 files hit OK and it's made taking a moment here and of course ratings as well and now I can see okay I have five uh, I have two five star rated images I have also one rated three stars and a lot of uh, zero so not rated ones so I just want to see the five stars here uh, hit OK and now uh, it's just showing the five stars um, if I don't need the filtering anymore, I just hit filter again here and the filter bar is gone and now it's just showing uh, again all the files. Uh, of course, if I'm now rating, let's say this image, uh, I want to rate as 5 stars. I just rate it as 5 stars. Go back here, go to filtering again and uh, Photomate will also recognize um, the filter ad, uh, options for the current folder. So whenever you enter this folder again, enable filtering, uh, Photomate will show you the latest, uh, the last settings for filtering. And it's now also showing five stars here. Uh, you can now also open this image as well. You can remove the rating again. Um, and now when I go back, it just take a few seconds maybe, depending how, how often it's, it's refreshing in background. And after this you will see the image will automatically uh, disappear here because we just want to see five stars. So yeah, that's uh, some of the main changes in the gallery uh, and browsing uh, features here. So now I will talk a little bit about the changes in the editing. And the most important change you will not directly notice and this is the default behavior first how raw files are processed and the algorithms itself. So for instance, we even changed the exposure algorithms to work more natural and more like uh, the exposure at your camera would work. So this will make it much more easier to get uh, best results qu quite quickly here. And um, there are also some changes um, to, the, uh, to the GUI here. 
So first of all, um, the, the, the edit sliders look a little bit different. And now to reset edits, you simply have to double tap um, to any slider and it will revert back to the default value here. So next of all, you see this small checkboxes here. And this means uh, you can toggle uh, individual groups on or off. So for instance, let's zoom in here. And now we will uh, go to effects and add some crane and now I can simply turn off and turn on to see the difference. Of course if I turn it off uh, Photomate will still save my value here it's now not enabled but uh, whenever I turn it on I still have my values here. So what's also new is in the details section and this is about the selective sharpening. So selective sharpening uh, basically works by just sharpening ex existing image detail or existing image edges. Um, I explained this a little bit more detailed in an article, but basically you just don't have to worry about uh, the algorithms behind, you just can use it. So to demonstrate it, I will just turn the sharpness to the highest value to really see differences here. And now you can already see that the edges are pretty sharp now, but the, the um, areas, the plain areas here are quite not so sharp. I mean, there is a little bit noise, but not too much. And what I can now do is I can change uh, the detail value, which is new and uh, controls the selective sharpening. If I set the detail to 100, it means sharpen basically everything, which is like in Photomate R2. So if I set it to zero, it would mean uh, it just works completely, completely selective. So you can see that now just in the edges it's getting sharpened and there of course also a little bit of noise getting sharpened. But the overall areas here uh, which are get, were getting noisy before are not getting that noisy now. Um, by default it's set to 25 which should give you an acceptable combination of selective sharpening and normal sharpening and I would... You can play around of course but this default value should already give you good results here. So what's also new is um, the split toning and for this I will choose an other image which is a little bit more uh, uh, usable here and here you can now set how uh, which color the lights and the shadows should get and you can uh, control the amount of coloring via the saturation. I will set now the saturation to 100 on both to really see the effect here. And now I can set the shadow color, so for instance like to something like this uh, blue or cyan. And I can set, oops, I can set the lights to let's say something blue as well. And now I can also use the balance to say I want more combined via the shadows or more via the lights. So you can play around and you can see that it's changing a little bit the values. And this also depends on the histogram of the image, so you really have to try around. Uh, which value looks good for your image here. So yeah, and what's also new is that you now have this virtual copies function, which means you can store all the current editing into a virtual copy. So if I add, uh, press, uh, press the plus now here, I can add a name, I can then name this just colored. And now I can choose save here. And now it's creating a, a copy which is called colored and now I can go on and do different stuff like I can make just for instance I can make this image black and white. And now just to show you how it works I name this BW for black and white and choose save. And now I have a different copy which is called BW and is black and white here. And now I can also select such a copy and it's appling all the settings from this copy and I can switch between them. Of course, I can remove them or I can set them as my new default uh, options here. So one more thing which is also new about the sharpening um, is the, the sharing option. Uh, as before, you can export the images and have the dialog with all the export stuff here. But sometimes you just want to quickly share an image. And there's the new share button and here it's now showing you all your presets you have and R3 also ships with some default presets as you can see here. But you can of course also delete them and use your own uh, or change them or however you like. 
So for instance, I want to sh uh, share this image maybe to my social media. So I choose the medium option, which is resizing the image as well here. And now it's basically opening the image, converting it, appling all your editings. And after it's done, it will automatically store this image in an internal folder. Um, and you can directly share this image to uh, yeah whatever app you would like to use for sharing like Facebook or Google Plus or something different. So here you see I have my image now and I can directly uh, use and share option and of course I can also tap this away and take a look at how the image uh, looks like here. This is now a resized image is also showing here just two megapixels now so it has been resized. Yeah, and you can use this for quickly sharing. And going back here, I uh, still back in my edits and all the edits are uh, just saved from before here. The last feature I want to show you is the new watermark feature. I mean, watermark itself is not completely new. We also have watermarks in Photomate R2, but in R3 you can do some more stuff with the watermarks. So first of all, I go to the app preferences here and go to watermarks. And now it's asking for a profile name. I will just call it test for now, just to show you how it basically works. So you now can choose a watermark type. You can choose a PNG transparent, uh, transparent image, which was in R2 the default mode, but you now also have a text mode. And I will choose the text mode. And now I have some different options. Like for instance, I can enter a text now, like I could write my name in here, but I can also use some kind of chokers like EXIF data, I want to print in the image, like for instance, I can use a hashtag date here. Um, and I can use the time as well. And so I can print my EXIF date and time directly into my image. So I will save this and I can now also set a color here. So for instance, I, yeah, I want to have it maybe green. I can choose OK. And I can now set the position and this is also new. Uh, you now also have a preview here so you can uh, live adjust basically your watermark um, and change the size and so on. Then you can see how your values will actually look like in your image. Like for instance here now the date is going to be print and the, the time as well. Of course you can also do uh, other things like exposure compensation and so on. You can print all these values directly into your image here as well. So yeah, that's that about all the new watermark features in R3. So yeah, that's most of the changes, uh, which are, are basically the changes which are most important here. There are some other new features like um, now you can set the DPI for output and some other new changes and improvements, especially in terms of performance. But um, for the overall look, I think this should give you a good idea what we have been working on and what is going to be different if you're going to upgrade to R3. So thank you for watching and hopefully to see you next time. Bye.